Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee provided by Nintendo. Though the product was gifted, the opinions expressed in this video are our own. <laughs> A battle you want, huh? Well, prepare to fight my strongest Pokemon. I choose you, AJ! I'm not doing this. AJ, we're being challenged by a seven-year-old. Yeah, but if we win, we're the adults that destroyed a little kid and took his money. Just get out and battle. Fine. I choose you, AJ. I hate you, Dan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of that Cyber Channel. I'm Dan Cyber, And I'm AJ from Fanatics 4. Nintendo finally did it. After complaining for years about playing on a small handheld, Pokemon is finally coming to a home console. If you ignore these. Today we're talking about Pokemon Let's Go, the HD Pokemon game that I've always wanted to kill time before Generation 8 hits. While most of us have our eyes set on Pokemon 2019, Pokemon Let's Go gives us a taste of what we might see in the future. But can Pokemon Let's Go stand amongst the other main series games? Well, let's slap it in and find out. Though, I mean, we got it digitally, so, you know, um, consider it slept. Oh my god, we're only at the menu and I'm loving all of this already! It's pretty damn quick to see just how great the game looks finally being in full HD. Well, unless you're in handheld mode, then you're at 720p. Still better than 240p, people. To make sure we covered all of our bases, AJ played the Pikachu edition of the game and I played the Eevee version. Though my personal save is on Pikachu as well. Pikachu's the best, fight me. Our story begins with an Eevee jumping out of our screen. <laughs> That's a way to start, immediately destroy the fabric of reality. Who needs world building when you can just immediately throw out the rules right away? This continues the theme we started to see with Pokemon Go, breaking down the barriers between the game and the player. But it doesn't seem to end there. After Professor Oak's famous World of Pokemon speech, we finally get a look at our character and he seems confused, which makes me confused. So we're all just confused. Your first interactions seem to hint that you, the player, have actually been transported into the world of Pokemon, which, you know, is the dream. Despite this weird meta beginning, the story begins to fall into a retelling of Pokemon Yellow. Get your starter, catch the Pokemon, defeat Team Rocket, and become a damn champion! It's the same story. Um, not really? What? Yes it is. I got a rival, I fight in the same gym battles, I even obtain the Helix God! That doesn't mean it's a straight retelling. The story actually seems to take place between Gen 1 and Gen 2, as you'll run into Blue, the Gen 1 rival, who has already completed his Pokemon journey. Okay, fair. There are some pretty distinct story moments that show this isn't just the third remake of the Gen 1 games. There are even familiar faces from other games that arrive in Kanto for you to fight as well. Plus, we do have a new rival, Butts. You named your rival Butts. Of course. And you named yourself? Only the greatest hunter from Yarnum, the conqueror of the wastelands of the Commonwealth, the hero of Dumble Cube Island. Peter Stroganoff. Your channel has a stupid history. A stupidly rich history? Yes, it does. I meant what I said. You're a butts. Your rival this time around is your next door neighbor growing up and feels a lot like Hal from Sun and Moon. Overly positive and very supportive of you on your journey. He's really kind of bland. Well, actually, most of the characters are rather bland. Even Jesse and James of Team Rocket don't have that spunk from the anime. However, there is one with enough character for all of them your partner Pokemon. It's the very first Pokemon you catch with Oak, and it instantly shows that it's very different from the other Pokemon. Plus, it's literally the cutest damn thing of all time. I felt a small glimmer of light deep down in the depths of my dead heart for a while. Your partner is the most expressive character in this entire game, changing its mood and feelings depending on what's happening in the game. And it's so damn cute that the whole game just is, which brings us to presentation. Let's state the obvious right away. This is easily the best looking Pokemon game in the series, especially when you consider the last games having the resolution of 240p. This is a huge jump for the series. The Kanto region and your favorite Gen 1 Pokemon all look phenomenal in this game. From their models to textures of each one, Pokemon have never looked better, though all the humans look disproportioned. It's like one third head, one third torso, one third legs. That, that's not how a human 
looks. The Kanto region also looks fantastic even if it still retains the tile layout from the original games. It's still very square for lack of a better term, but the added detail to the world helps bring Kanto to life. So even though most paths and areas are very angular, it doesn't feel that way entirely. If you can't tell, we like how the game looks during play, but then you get to the menus. The menus for this game aren't all that terrible to look at, but the organization of them can be like sorting through your junk drawer. Don't lie to yourself, we all got them. See? Just a bunch of junk. Just junk that's not gonna have any bearing on my life later. But you know, in case it does, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Okay, all right, bye. The bag is the biggest culprit of junk drawer syndrome. In the more recent Pokemon games, each item had its own pocket to live in. At first glance, Pokemon Let's Go does the same thing. That is, until you start picking up repels, lures, and other collectible items. Then they just randomly drop underneath the other categories. It just looks sloppy to have all these random items floating around. And they all fit in a category, so why not just make a pocket for adventure items? Yet, even then, there's way too many of these categories in this bag. The Poke Box and Clothing Trunk don't really fit under the item menu. Put the Pokemon Box in the Party menu and Clothing Trunk with the Pikachu menu. Then you could create that adventure item category in the bag to organize the rest of the junk. You never want to be the YouTuber complaining about menus, but it's important here. You spend a lot of time going through the menus to sort through everything. Just a little organization never killed anyone. That being said, there's one more thing to talk about in presentation, the music, and it is good. Most of the songs in the game are orchestrated versions of the Gen 1 music. It sounds great and adds a lot of depth to the original tracks. Personal favorite is what they did with the Vermilion City track. There's just something so satisfying about hearing the guitar plucking along with the rest of the orchestra. It makes me feel like I'm at the beach. What? It's the middle of winter. I'm not going to go out to the beach for a bit. I might be crazy, but I'm not an idiot. Cover! All right, let's get into the meat of this thing. Sounds good to me. Let's talk about playing with your Eevee. I was talking about the core gameplay, but yeah, I guess we can start there. Similar to the last couple of games, you could play with your Pokemon to improve your relationship with them. Except this time, it's just the partner Pokemon. So in my case, I can only play with Fluffles here. It's as adorable as you would expect. You can pet your partner Pokemon by using the motion controls of the Joy-Con or the touch controls while in handheld mode. And you can change the hair to this ungodly sight. Listen kids, never do bangs. Ever. That doesn't mean your other Pokemon are completely left out of the fun. While your partner Pokemon will hitch a ride on your shoulder or head, you can take one of your Pokemon out of the ball to follow you around. In the early game, this is mostly just for aesthetic's sake, which is great because now I have this good boy following me everywhere. But once you get a Pokemon large enough, you can ride these Pokemon for faster speeds. So now I can ride this big boy. Because of this, the bike has been cut from the game, which to be totally fair, riding a bike is lamer than riding a giant onyx around. However, if you have played Sun and Moon, this change was kinda to be expected with ride Pokemon being introduced in those games. Of course, you can't hang out with Pokemon unless you catch them which leads us to the game's encounters. Trainer encounters still work the same way as the other games. You'll go head to head with another trainer, battling it out until someone has no more Pokemon left to battle with. The real change to the game is how you encounter wild Pokemon. Instead of battling the Pokemon till it's weak enough to catch, the game takes a page from Pokemon Go, as in it completely rips the capturing mechanic from the mobile phone game. You'll either need to aim with handheld mode or you'll use the Joy-Con's motion controls to throw the Pokeballs. Now the motion controls work well for the most part, but there are occasions when the Pokeball just goes on its own journey. This was one of the controversial changes when this game was announced. Even now, players seem pretty split on how they feel about it. Our personal feeling on it, I think we both like the change. Sure, it means you're getting to battle less, but it makes the process of wild Pokemon encounters feel smoother and faster. In the past, wild Pokemon battles would start out fun, but quickly become an annoying chore. This way feels more streamlined and resolves a lot faster than wild Pokemon battles. If you don't want to deal with wild Pokemon though, good news! You can now see the Pokemon in the overworld, 
This is a huge change that helps make surfing in the caves feel much less like a chore. Where it was once just one encounter after another, you could now run through Mount Moon without encountering a single Pokemon if you wanted, even without repels. It greatly helps with the pacing of the game. That's just the first quality of life change to the game. HMs are also removed, and your partner Pokemon handles all of those needs similar to the ride Pokemon from Sun and Moon. It's definitely a very welcome change to keep in the game. And for all you hardcore Pokemon players out there that don't think there's enough depth in this game, well, you're wrong. IV stats are still strong in this game, and it's much easier to find a Pokemon with the right stats. When capturing the same Pokemon multiple times in a row, you'll begin to get a chain bonus. Once you reach a chain of 31, the next spawns of this Pokemon will have the highest IV stats you can catch. On top of that, bottle caps and gold bottle caps make a return, so if you don't feel like chaining, you could always farm up caps. So for those that think the game is still easy, Evan, there is still a lot of depth in the game for you to work with. Speaking of easy! Oh my god, where did you come from? Co-op makes it way too easy and very, very, very boring for the second player. Answer the question! By shaking the second controller, another player can join in and run around the overworld. Though really, the most they can do is wander around and stun wild Pokemon, which makes it pretty boring for the second player. I can't even pick up an item to help move things along. It's in the encounters though that things start to become easy. First with the wild Pokemon. If both players throw the ball at the same time, and hit, they'll get a catch bonus that will put out more EXP for your Pokemon. Trainer battles is where it just becomes broken. While the other trainer will only use one Pokemon unless it is a 2v2 battle, the players will be able to use two Pokemon. This makes battling bug catchers and Viridian Forest into a damn extermination. Even if the other trainer has multiple Pokemon, they'll STILL only send out one. But why though? No, it's just a way for inexperienced players to get introduced into the franchise with a friend. It's great for older siblings to play with younger siblings, or with a significant other that doesn't game, which is not our situation. I just want to pick up items. That's all I want in my sad, slow life. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna get her out of here. It's right there, right now. Is she gonna be okay? I gave her a minute to cuddle, we have about five minutes. Multiplayer isn't the only way the game gets easier. If you want to shell out the extra $50, you can grab the Pokeball Plus accessory. Cybert, are you talking about the Pokeball Plus? Oh my God, who else wants to interrupt? We just wore Bob, but Dan's doing a terrible job. What? Yep, just like I thought, don't worry, I got it. But how was I doing a terrible The first thing I noticed when I picked this thing up was the build quality. This thing does not feel cheap, which is good because $50 is a lot after all. It also has a surprising amount of functionality. Aside from being a full-fledged controller for Pokemon Let's Go, it also connects to the Pokemon Go app on your phone and acts just like the Pokemon Go Plus wristband does. In Pokemon Let's Go, you could take one of your Pokemon outside of the game and the Pokeball Plus will track all of your steps so that when you reconnect the Pokeball Plus to the game, it will reward you with a massive amount of XP. So if you're ever to leave the house, it would behoove you to take a Pokemon from your party with you. Oh yeah, and this thing's the only way you can get a Mew, but whatever. Anyway, if you want to hear a whole lot more about the Pokeball Plus and all of its different functionalities, you should go on over to my channel and check out my video where I go into way more detail. Oh look, my Magikarp found a candy. Thanks, Bob. That was much better than what Dan would have done. I didn't even... Whatever! With the Pokeball Plus, this game is trying to do something similar to what Pokemon Go started, breaking down the barrier between the Poke world and our own reality. Being able to take your Pokemon out for a stroll and interact with it, as basic as the interaction is, continues to blur the lines between the game and real life. Sure, the Pokeball Plus is just a glorified controller, but that is your Pikachu or Eevee in there. It feels like we're one freak genetic experiment away from creating our first Pikachu. The end goal we're clearly working towards. But seriously, it's just a way to connect the player to the world. It's about building that connection with your Pokemon that engages the player and keeps them playing. And hell, it's working with a lot of players. Overall though, despite the massive changes to the gameplay, Pokemon Let's Go is not the watered down version we thought it was going to be. Pokemon Let's Go was a welcome surprise to my Switch library. I knew I was going to enjoy the game, I just didn't know how much. It's simplified in a lot of the right ways, yet still has the depth players are looking for. Sure, it's not perfect, but the good greatly outweighs any gripes that I have with the game. So, what are our final thoughts on the game? 
Well, whether or not you're a fan of the franchise, this is a game for every Switch owner. It's simple to pick up, but complex enough to keep players engaged for the long haul. All right, AJ, back in the Pokeball. I'm, I'm not going back in there. It's dark in there, dang. Too bad. Now, you too, dear audience, must go back into the Pokeball. Back! Oh! Thank you everyone for watching, and a special thanks to AJ from Fanatics4, Bob from The Wolf Den, and Alyssa B. Crazy for helping me with this video. You can check out all their channels here in the end card or in the description down below. If you haven't already, make sure to follow me on Twitch where we do streams every week. Link again in the description. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, like the video, all that good YouTube stuff, and until next time, Cybered out.